Okay, um, this morning I'm going to start a, another quick video. Um, I said in the last video that I wasn't going to do this, but uh, I'm, I'm going to make some changes to the plans on the Vicky project for the power cylinder. Um, I know uh, it's, it's, uh, the machining is much the same as the uh, displacer cylinder, but uh, as far as the fins and all that are concerned, and the uh, information or the written information that comes with the Vicky project states that, uh, that it's the same thing basically. So th they, they don't make any changes, they do all the machining the same way. Uh, but I'm thinking that's not a good idea because I'm thinking the things that I ran into last time that I wasn't happy about on the displacer cylinder were the fact that I couldn't use a steady number one and that they did the boring at the end. So <clears throat> this time I'm going to bore the cylinder in the beginning. That's what I'm going to do because the if it's an aluminum cylinder, it needs a um, it needs a sleeve put in there, and I'll probably use a black uh, brass sleeve, or a stainless steel, or steel some some other kind of metal uh, for a sleeve. But um, and the power cylinder, in reality, it has to be bored almost perfectly, so the piston has an almost perfect fit with like. A, a half a thousandth clearance. I mean, that's that's it. And um, the displacer cylinder is not quite that critical. So if you have some deviation in the in the bore, um, you know, from one end to the other or something, it doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of difference. But for the power cylinder, it does. So um, on the on the last engine that I built, I was able to buy a piece of tubing. I changed the size of the piston to fit the tubing. And, uh, but on this one, I'm trying to follow the plans exactly. So um, I, I will have to bore, um, to bore that uh, in place. So hopefully, you know, I'll be able to do that. I'm, I'm a little hesitant. I do have some tubing that I could use by changing the size of the piston um, because the tubing has a perfect seamless interior or ID on it so it, it would work perfectly so anyway with that um, I'm going to uh, uh, set up another piece of uh, uh, bar stock uh, this time it's not quite as large as the last one so um, with that I'll move the camera over and show you what I'm doing and this will just be the first little segment here um, kind of an introduction to this next video and if you want to see how to machine all the fins and, and that type of thing, you can look at the last video I did. I think that was part four. So with that, I'm going to move the camera and I'll show you what I set up over here on the mini, mini lathe. Okay, I've set a piece of material up here on the mini lathe this morning. And um, what I did was is I, I uh, machined off both ends of it. And, um, and cleaned up the surface, okay? And this has got a little more to come off of it than, than the displacer cylinder had. I, I think, uh, yeah, I can't remember exactly what size this material is, but it's a pretty good size chunk of bar stock anyway. Um, the displacer, I think I started off with two, two and a quarter, and I only had to machine it down to two and an eighth. Uh, this one, I think I'm starting off with a piece that's about an inch and three quarters in diameter. And I've got to machine it down to, um, yeah, I'm not sure. Let's see here. So, let's see. i got to machine it down to an inch, almost a, a little over an inch and a half. Okay. And uh, let's see. Well, let me zoom out a little bit. So there's my there's my working drawing that I'm working from, and it's 1.54 is the uh, diameter of that cylinder. So um, anyway, with that, uh, um, I'll call off on this segment because. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up the. I've got this cleaned up on both ends, and I've got it, uh, you know, in the chuck, and and it's all dialed in. So what I'm going to do now is. Um, um, remove the tailstock uh, center 
and I'm going to put the steady on it and I'm going to bore it out to whatever size I need to put a sleeve in there and um, I'll probably put a solid piece of material in there to begin with and then I'll I'll rebore it again I don't know maybe maybe I can find a piece of tubing that's that's right uh, without spending too much money although brass tubing and uh, any kind of tubing is a little bit expensive probably 14 or 15 dollars for a one foot piece of tubing of which I only need about uh, uh, less than two maybe two inches maximum so anyway uh, with that um, I'll call off on this segment and um, we'll move on to the next phase okay we're working on the power cylinder and like I said in the last uh, the last video or the last segment that um, we were going to show a lot of uh, footage uh, video footage on this because it's pretty much the same as the uh, displacer cylinder uh, however there is a couple differences that I want to point out and they'll only take a couple seconds I um, I this this cylinder has a sleeve in it um, so what I did was, hang on a second. I'll zoom out here and uh, let's see if I can get this in the lens. So I I had a piece of uh, tubing here. Now it's got nice. It's got a nice thick wall on it, and it's got a very precise uh, interior dimension for the piston. So. It's 20 thousandths over the plan, uh, so it's 620 instead of 600, but I, I, I'm sure it'll work fine. So I put that, I put a piece of this in there for a sleeve. However, um, in doing that, the plan didn't show that, even though it asked for a sleeve if you're using aluminum for the uh, displacer, uh, I mean the power cylinder, it didn't account for the sleeve uh, as far as the depth of the um, the fins are concerned so when you change the depth also you have to change the angle of the bevel between the fins so that changes from three and a half to five and a half degrees and the depth can be whatever you want it uh, whatever you feel safe with but um, I uh, I reduced the depth quite a bit so probably I reduced it uh, about a hundred thousandths or something for a sixty-five thousandths wall thickness so but I don't think I don't think it makes any difference uh, one way or the other it's going to look the same so with that um, uh, we're, we're, we're machining this and I'll put a few minutes of it a uh, few minutes of the footage on the um, on the video and maybe we'll put it the the conclusion once I get it parted off and um, and um, you know show the mating parts to it just like I did the displacer cylinder so with that uh, uh, I'm gonna shut the camera off I'm gonna I'm gonna move my I'm gonna move my micrometer dial over 200 thousandths and make the next cut I've cut all the slots previously just like I did on the displacer so it's the same the same routine and uh, I've cut the bevel on one side of all these slots so I'm I'm making the final pass now so I have nine slots to cut the bevel on the opposite side and then we're then we're ready to uh, to part this off and we have to um, uh, round off some edges and, and things like that so I'm gonna shut the camera and I'll just show a few minutes of this maybe one or two fins and um, and we'll call that uh, we'll call that it for this segment I might mention that uh, I'm not using any coolant this time uh, because it seems to work this this particular process right here seems to work okay without coolant as long as I take it easy the other thing is is it helps me to see down in the groove to tell when I get when I get to the bottom of course I can go by the dial but I like to see the tool bit bottom out
And I'm going back in twice to make sure I can clean the swarp and that I can see the final cut very clearly. And this is working much better than the than the displacer. So I'm having better luck with it anyway. Okay, we're gonna move the micrometer dial another two hundred thousandths. Okay, there she be. Um, actually came out pretty good. Uh, obviously we have a lot of polish work to do on these things and we want this thing to look pretty pretty beautiful when it gets done. So um, uh, let me go over to the bench and um, and show you what we got. Let me, I don't know if I can, there's a, there's the parts that we got made so far. The displacer cylinder, the power cylinder, the front frame, the rear frame and the and the uh, frame on the and on the rear of the uh, displacer cylinder so there there are the parts we got made so far we've got screws made too which we which will be probably the next step so let me zoom in on uh, on this a little bit now that we've seen the overall thing all right so so there's the what we just did. There's the power cylinder, and you can see the sleeve. Let's see if I can um, let me turn the viewer around and go down here and see if I can show you that. I don't know if I can or not. Okay. So this the this is the rear frame up here. So that's that's done. Here's uh, the head of the power cylinder. That's done. I mean, a displacer cylinder, I mean. Here's the displacer cylinder. That's done. And here's what we just did. This is the, um, the, the piece. We put, a, we put a, uh, a brass sleeve in there with a 16th inch wall on it. It's 620 thousandths ID. So it should be 600 according to the plan. So we're 20 thousandths over. I think that'll be fine. I don't think there's a problem with that, but uh, there's there's what we did. We just cut all the fins the same as we did on the displacer uh, cylinder. Uh, this one, I did the same thing. I just hit the, the edges after I got done with the file, so they're all nice and round. They're not round, but they're smooth and rounded, okay? And then I, I did a little bit more file work on this thing. This The plan showed this as a... Uh, a uh, half round surface so I just uh, used the um, uh, chamfer tool and took some off of each one of the edges and then I just rounded it off with a file so that the aluminum file is real easy so it's not a problem um, I'm assuming this surface is nice and flat if it's not we may have to clean that up these surfaces have to be flat um, the mating surfaces so we don't have any air leaks but I'll probably I'll probably put gaskets on these anyway so um, I checked I checked this with a square it look it looks perfect so actually it, it may be it may be just fine so I didn't check this one I just parted it off but um, I did set up the party tool nice and square so hopefully hopefully it came out good so there you go um, so I'll call off and and I wasn't, really wasn't going to make a video concerning the power cylinder, considering it was so so much the same as the other as the other parts. But uh, anyway, that's I did. So we'll 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 put this up on YouTube. It'll be a short it'll be a short video. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this was a benefit to somebody. If you're thinking about building the uh, Vicky hot air engine um, this should be a help um, at least uh, <laughs> you'll see all my catastrophes and problems so anyway thanks for watching see you later bye